Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and today I'm here with recipe 16 in our SoSpire sewing series. And I am hoping that we are going to be able to finish the planner cover slash organizer that we started last week. Just to catch you up in case you are just joining us, last week we crafted the interior of our organizer. With and it is designed specifically to hold the tools for Wisdom Planner, which is my favorite planner. And it is the planner that we use in our newly formed planner community. I will put links to both the planner and the planner community down below if you are interested in joining us. And so the interior has two of these zipper pockets which double as flaps and hold the front and or rear cover of the actual planner and so that is found the instructions for this part of the process are found in recipe 15 which will also be linked in the notes for this tutorial so today what we're going to do is incorporate a divided slip pocket as well as a vertical pocket which also can be divided if you like and a full flap closure with two magnetic snaps and that will complete the planner cover and then next week we're going to make a few fun planner accessories if you have special requests please let me know in the comments and i'll see what i can come up with for you between now and then so what i want to do first is craft the flap closure which is made from two pieces of material that measure three and a half inches wide by 12 inches tall i am using two kind of brass magnetic snaps on mine and i will show you how to install these as well but i wanted to point out to you that these should be positioned one inch up from the long edge and two inches in and the way that i install my magnetic snaps is to place the little disc that comes with them on top of the material and the interfacing. In this case, I'm using the heavyweight Pella non-fusible. And I apologize, I don't know the number for this. I think it is Pella 70, but I am not entirely positive. And so I place that disc on there and then with an ink pen, I mark those two little slits and then I come in and very carefully with the seam ripper, I cut two little holes in the material and the interfacing and then I poke those prongs through the back of that and then I position that disc on top of there and then fold those prongs inward if you would like to spare your fingers, you can use the blunt end of a pen to press that down and that usually works pretty good. And then the snaps are installed. Right now we're just going to install the thicker portion of those magnetic snaps. This thinner portion is going to go on that exterior vertical pocket, but we're going to need to wait until the planner comes together and so that we can position those snaps appropriately. So right now we're going to take the second piece of that flap and position it right sides facing on top of that magnetic snap panel. And then it's up to you if you want to slightly angle the corners. I think I'm going to leave mine um, square there. And so you're going to stitch down the short edge, down that side that has the magnetic snaps closest, and then across the bottom short edge there. 
And you can use three eighths of an inch seam allowance for this. And then all you should need to do is just angle the corners there. If you want, you can trim that up a little bit more. I'm not going to because I am using a woven fabric and I do not want to press my luck with that material. So then the next step is to turn this right side out, give it a good press, poke out those corners. And that is what the flap closure looks like after it has been pressed. These raw edges are going to be consumed in the side seam, so you don't have to worry about those at the moment. So we're gonna set this aside until we move into the final assembly. And now we're gonna work on that full length front pocket, which is crafted from two pieces of fabric, which are nine inches tall by 21 inches long. You're gonna take the top long edge of each and press that over a half an inch and then take those edges and stagger them slightly to create a little lip there. If you use a contrasting or an accent fabric as the lining, that will give you kind of like a little faux piping there. I am using the same print, so I'm just going to try and align this pattern, but I'm not going to obsess too much about it. And I just want to achieve that little ridge right there. And then I'm going to add two rows of top stitching. Okay, and that's what that looks like with the two rows of top stitching there. And then we need to craft the vertical pocket, which is going to be attached to the front cover there. And that measures 13 inches high by 11 inches. And it's just one cut of fabric. And so you're gonna press the 13 inch sides over about a half an inch and fold that in half and then you want to achieve the same effect stagger that fabric slightly and add two rows of top stitching okay same look there now we're going to need our exterior body panel which measures 13 by 21 inches I am not using any batting or interfacing on mine. If you are working with a cotton fabric, I highly recommend that you do add some batting or interfacing of your choice. I am comfortable with just the one layer of batting in my organizer, so I'm gonna stick with that and I opted to put that on the interior. So you're going to now position this exterior full length pocket on top of that body panel and you can line up those bottom edges of the pocket you may find that your underside of the pocket is slightly shorter and that's because of how we staggered that fabric so just align the shortest edge of the pocket with the base of the body panel and then you get to decide how you would like to divide your pocket. I am definitely dividing mine in the center and then I'm gonna bump over a few inches there and size a pocket to hold my cell phone perfectly. And so that for me is gonna be about a four inch pocket there. So I have pressed a little line in the material four inches in so that I can use that as a guide. And I also pressed a line at center. And so now I'm just going to put this on the machine deck and stitch vertically down this full length pocket to divide it and create three slip pockets. Then you're going to position that vertical pocket that we created along that right hand side 
And then you're gonna bring back over your interior panel, which has the two zipper compartments on it. And go ahead and unzip those zippers to about the halfway mark so there's no chance that you're gonna catch those zipper heads in your stitch line and you're gonna to wanna to bring over your flap closure and position that on the right hand side, centered, and you're gonna want the raw edges aligned with the raw edges of the interior and those magnetic snaps facing down. And so that's the interior panel with the flap and the two zipper pockets. And then this is the exterior panel with the three slip pockets and the vertical pocket on the right. And so you're going to position this interior panel on top of that right sides facing and try and align all your sides as best you can. Now you're going to stitch across the top down the side that has the flap and across the base. So keep in mind, this is my exterior and this piece with the batting is my interior. So if your exterior is facing up on that right hand side, there is your flap. Okay, so you're going to stitch across the top, down the flap and across the base. Leave the side with that vertical front pocket unstitched. And for this, I suggest using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, so I've made it around the two long edges and the edge with the flap closure. And so now I want to remove any pins and clips that we're holding the layers together. And then I am gonna go ahead and trim around this down to about a quarter of an inch. Once you have that all trimmed up, then go ahead and turn your cover around. You're gonna to want to do that carefully because the felt that is inside of those pockets is going to offer you a little bit of a re resistance there, but it's going to be super useful with the structure of the organizer. Okay, then once you get that all turned around, you want to press well and then check all of those seams, tug on your pockets a bit and make sure that you didn't miss any of the layers you should have that vertical pocket turned so it's partially covering up the zipper pocket at this point. So this is the interior and this is what the exterior looks like. Your flap should be out with those snaps facing up because when you close this, then it would close like that. We are going to turn this flap after we stitch up the side here. So before we do that though, go ahead and give it a good press. That vertical flap is kind of turned inside out and it's on the interior. So now you're gonna come across using the same 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Give this a good tug, make sure everything is aligned and the pockets are laying flat on the interior and exterior and stitch that opening closed. And once you have that stitch closed, go ahead and trim it up again, same quarter of an inch. And then you can turn that flap around to the front of the cover. And poke out those corners, press it if needed. So the interior flaps should be open and you have those zipper closures there. 
and then on the exterior you have your flap closure your vertical pocket and then however you decided to divide your pockets so the flap will be to the right so what you're going to want to do now is fold the cover in half test fit before you get to this point in the process and then determine approximately how much room you have to spare on the flap and so this planner that i'm using is about an inch thick so i'm going to have to come in as close as i can to the edge of that vertical pocket in order to have enough room to accommodate the spine of the planner and so i'm just going to align everything up there and then same thing position those little discs in line with the existing snaps and about a half an inch from the edge of that vertical pocket if you are using larger magnetic snaps you're going to want to be mindful of your seam allowance there i believe these were like 15 millimeter magnetic snaps so smaller is better in this case so i'm just going to mark where the cuts will be on that fabric And then I'm only cutting through the two layers on the pocket. So I'm going to poke that seam ripper in there real careful and just cut that fabric only where I have marked. And then I'll just fit the prongs through those slits that I've made in the fabric. And then I positioned the disc on top of those prongs and use the blunt end of the pen to fold those inward. And that's what it looks like on the underside there. And so then when I turn the cover over with the right side facing up, those magnetic snaps should align nice and they do and that's how you will close your planner now it's time to test fit and that's a really nice snug fit on this custom made especially for the tools for wisdom planner i'm super happy with this i'm going to keep this one for myself i have been saving this fabric for a special project absolutely love the colors and so now i have this rear pocket for full-size documents and then i have this vertical pocket here where i can slip smaller items and in addition the vertical pocket kind of acts like a flap closure for that innermost slip pocket there and then i have my cell phone pocket which also can double as a pen pocket and then on the inside my two interior zipper pockets there one on the front and one on the back and if you didn't want that front cover inside of that slip pocket, you could have your cover showing and then you could use this for another notebook or um, just simply as a pocket. So I'm really happy with how this came together and I'm thrilled to have an organizer for my Tools for Wisdom planner. So next week we're going to be sewing some small accessories that will coordinate with this planner cover and then I'm going to be taking two weeks off 
for a little adventure, which I will tell you more about later. And then after that, we're going to start a series all about cutting fabric. So until next Tuesday, as always, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Have an awesome week, everyone. Thank you.